a perfect outcome to all things. Here's a show. Every day Because my faith Leads away A perfect outcome To all things Is assured In every situation There's a blessing somewhere Come gather brothers and sisters And we'll see that it is there I need you You need me Yes, you do. And that's how our happiness is guaranteed. <laughs> Take it, boys. <laughs> and now, in all your doings, be you blessed. Through you is ushered in a world unseen, unheard, yet truly there. Holy are you, and in your light, the world reflects your holiness. For you are not alone and friendless. I give thanks for you and join your efforts on behalf of God, knowing that they are on my behalf as well, and for all those who walk to God with us. Sing it with us. Walk to God. A to all things is a show. <laughs> a perfect outcome to all things yeah, yeah, is a show. <laughs> I'm glad we get that we doggies in there uh, no. all the time. That's the best part. Hey everybody! Wow, there's lots of folks in the room. Okay. Hey the Connie, the, um, hey Simon, the, hey. hey Marie, hey Anu, <laughs> hey Arizona. I uh, know. So happy to see all the, of you. Uh, the color today is green. Yeah. <laughs> in case you want to go change, you can't tell. <laughs> the color today is green. <laughs> and uh, so, just to let you know. Oh. Today's been a wonderful day here in the sanctuary. Oh, I know. And then uh, this afternoon during the break, Glenn got to feeling not feeling so well. I'm I'm, I'm having stomach. I'm having a, a, a <laughs> I'm getting over an upset stomach. I little had a little bicob, you know. And we're gonna settle my stomach. But I ate something that didn't agree with me this afternoon, and I've been so, on my on my back. Yeah. Uh, uh, Next, uh, worried about getting you know getting close to the bathroom. <laughs> you know, one of those stomach things. It's so much, I know. So we're just gonna take it easy today. So if I pause and breathe, yeah, you know, you That's understand. What's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I am not a body. I am free. Exactly. Right. Cheers. Cheers. I know. Cheers. I know. There Here's to the learning device, right? Here's what are we learning to the today? Learning device. What are we learning today in our with our That's learning good. devices? You know. Mm. That's really, really good. Yeah, that's a good way to oh, talk about it. Oh, this tea is really good, too. Oh, yeah. So we're drinking um, sorrel tea. That's what we usually do. Oh, we've got this recipe <laughs> down, y'all. <laughs> we really got this recipe down. So um, anyway, I just wanted to thank everybody so far today for sharing. It's just, it's brought up a lot of, um, uh, a lot of emotions. Oh, yeah. And maybe that's some of what's, processing in your learning device it could be yeah. mm -hmm. um i just also want to say uh how much i love the radiant sutras mm -hmm. <laughs> and um you know thank you Sina. i'm really looking forward to your meditations on uh the radiant sutras and i'm going to continue working with them i feel spirit leading me to you know, seeing them as I've been experimenting with you. And um, I feel like it's my imperfect offering because I am not used to singing 
um, verses that are not rhymed. <laughs> so uh, it's very interesting for me. And uh, I, in this safe space, I feel like it's important to follow spirits prompting as I always or want to do. do yeah and <laughs> just to share something that may not be perfect but that's how the light goes is in, right? now but is yeah very is now. now thank you George for joining us and thank you so much for your homily this yeah morning. We're, we're, oh my goodness we're, 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 you're going to wow. uh, see uh, inspiration from that uh, yeah. uh, spring forth in this this next hour watch. Yeah, yeah. I just feel like this has just been such a great day. And the uh, Shauna's um, self-inquiry really brought up wonderful things for us, too. And, in fact, for our sing-along today, <laughs> we're going to do Get Together because that was so... Uh, uh -huh. Inspirational. So we're going to yeah. get to sing it again. Well, and 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 the thing was was that I had been meaning to learn it, to sing it here, and to share it with you, and maybe even on Sounds of Awakening. And then I'd forgotten about it. Then Shauna played it today, and I was like, oh, yes, yes, I love that song. So we're gonna we're gonna share that. And the words are good. The words, the words are, are really. Good. We forget really how good. much you know the the yeah. words words are actually like oh. Yeah, I felt I feel like sometimes for those of us who uh, are a certain age, yeah, <laughs> grew up in the '60s and listen, <laughs> listen to songs on the radio, cough, cough. how um, absolutely beautiful some of those mm -hmm. uh, songs were, you know, and they've meant stayed with me and like my whole remain life. so. Yeah, almost, almost so, like a hymnal yeah, at this really. point, you know. You, you know? know what? So let's go ahead and sing it because it's just really. On my mind. Here we go. Google the lyrics, sing along. Oh yeah, you can, <laughs> you can Google, Google the lyrics, the lyrics and sing along. Um, the song is called Get Together, it's by the Young Bloods. So here we go.
Oh, thank little you, Misty. <laughs> <laughs> a little Misty there. Yeah, it makes it you know. teary. <laughs> which which kind of brings which brings me. Uh, the I know it's just. Are I know. Are I was. The are beautiful. I was shocked. I would, a little bit. It's like, oh my gosh, I actually know. The lyrics just, so I never even yeah. thought about it. Never. It's very course of miracles. Very you hold the key to love I, and fear I, all in your trembling hand. Doesn't it feel that way sometimes? Uh, like you're just trembling. The decision maker. Yeah. yeah. Is like deciding. We're going to talk about that. Making ah. it the goals. The goals is where we are. And the, the goals section is where we are in A Course in Miracles Chapter 3. Mm. Because I know you're good Course in Miracles students and are reading your 12.8 <laughs> pages a week. Uh, so, you know, I know I know everybody is, is doing that. Oh, so you read your 12.8 pages a week and you come up and you're going to end up with uh, just the beginning of uh, Chapter 3. Which is, chap the whole Chapter 3 is about what do you, what do you want? Mm. You know, you're this. You're the decision maker. You're the oh. you're the one who's going to choose about what life you're going to do. What what well, what are you going to be reflected? You know, like the you know, it says, this is a course of miracles. It's yeah. a required course. You know, the yeah. you don't you don't establish the what's on the curriculum, but you can take it in whatever order and how take it however long you want to take it. That's you true. know, so yeah. that we're going to say, what is your goals? Do you want it? Mm. And the course of miracles says over and over again, I'm here to save you time. You know why? Because we care about time. Holy Spirit doesn't care about time. So who do you think she's talking about? I'm here to save you time. Like get, like hurry up and get out of the way, right? You ever feel that way? It's like, oh my God, I need to hurry up and get out of the way. You know? That's funny. You know, just honestly, it's like, so what is, so, but that's, but that's because I've been doing A Course in Miracles for like 10, 15 years. Yeah. So it, it changes you, changes, I feel like it's changed my DNA. You, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because uh, like uh, like they say in uh, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, uh, every year someone's been uh, uh, rewriting the big book. You know, oh. you turn back and, because you approach it different. Every year yeah. we see something different. Every year we, we come back to it every year. So I'm glad you're joining us again. Uh, this year, as we go through uh, the Course in Miracles again, if we, you remember, if you remember yeah. last week, we left you <laughs> on Lesson Twenty Two, right? So we're gonna we're gonna go through the seven I lessons. These fi uh, first fifty lessons between. are a hoot. They are. They, they're really. I know people that just do the. I say this every week, but there are lots of people that just do these fifty lessons over and over. So we left off on lesson 22 last week. What I see is a form of vengeance oh, no. because she explains in the first paragraph, today's <laughs> idea accurately describes the way <laughs> anyone who holds attack <laughs> thoughts in his mind must, must see, see the, the world. world. I know. You're getting even. Right. Mm. You just, <laughs> I, if, the, if the world was a nice place, I wouldn't have to be so awful. <laughs> Right? You know? Okay, so then we go to... Uh, hold on, let me go back. Um, all right. Uh, we go to lesson 23. I can escape from the world I see by giving up attack thoughts. But, yeah, see, so she's... We're right here with looking at your mind. Looking at paying attention to where your attention is. Mm. You know? Mm. Okay. 24. Oh, this is a good one. I do not perceive my own best interest. Speaking of getting out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> see? Now, this is funny. In the first sentence, it says... In no situation that arises, <laughs> do you realize the outcome that would make you happy? Period. <laughs> and, then later, uh -huh. and then later, our opening song is, A Perfect Outcome um, is Assured. Sure. So later on uh -huh. in the lesson, she actually, it's based on the lesson, A Happy Outcome okay. is Assured. So at this point, uh, we're, she's saying that we do not realize the outcome that would make us happy. And you know... I think one reason why I love the lessons so much and the text so much and of course the miracles so much is it happens with any spiritual book that you're drawn to I think is that certainly every year you see something different or when you reread it um, it and remains this, alive it remains alive for me yeah and um, it when we learn something I've found in my life <laughs> that it's not just oh I learned it and that's it you know yeah. oh I learned it it keeps evolving and coming back around there's momentum what i call momentum you know? yeah. oh yeah and, well it and we're going to talk about around. today flow how this mm. how how your practice and doing what you want requires skills development mm. right requires actually doing the thing 
right? Like George was talking about. <laughs> so if you want the results, you have to put, you have to do the thing that's going to create the conditions for them, yeah. right? Yeah. So. All right. And then, let's see. All right. So this is, it's actually right here. Okay. It's actually there. There we go. Uh, so the next lesson Lesson 25 is, <laughs> I don't know what anything is for. I know. One of my favorite yeah, things to say. So, this Actually, is lesson 25. <laughs> you know, our sing along most of the time usually is, uh, let me let things be exactly, exactly as, as they, they are. are. And I use this in that song, I do not know what anything is for. Unless I listen to. A, yeah, the, I unless I listen to this still small voice that's telling me everything is for my good. Uh -huh. um, purpose is meaning. Today's idea explains why nothing you see mean, means anything. <laughs> you do not know what it is for. <laughs> I know, so and then she says, everything is for your, your own best interests. interests. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what do you say? Like, what do I want? I want what I need, not what I want. Oh, interesting. Okay. Oh, here's a good one. The next day, lesson 26, my attack thoughts are attacking my invulnerability. Oh, my. It is surely obvious <laughs> that if you can be attacked, you're, you're not, not invulnerable. invulnerable. You see attack as, as a, a real, real threat. threat. That's be, that's, that she... is because you believe you can <laughs> really attack. And what would have effects <laughs> through you must also have effects on you. I know. Well, it's what we, what I come away with this year in this lesson is that I actually am invulnerable. Yeah. You know? It's my attack thoughts. When I attack others or attack myself, that, you know, that monkey voice or whatever you want to say. It says, what am I, it um, tells you immediately what you're identifying with. Because if yeah. it has to be defended, you're yes. already sunk. Exactly. So it's asking you to really realize what side of the fence that you've fallen on. Really you know, true. when you make a decision <sighs> or take make an action. Oh, and then uh, Lesson 27 yes, this starts so cool. this lovely sequence. Above all else, I, I want, want to see... see and then lesson 28 yesterday above all else i want to see things differently things differently things differently. yeah things i want to see things differently wow 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 <laughs> this is cool she says um today we're really giving specific application to the idea for yesterday uh, above all else i want to see in these practice periods, you will be making a series of definite commitments. The question of whether you will keep them in the future is not our concern here. Uh, no! If you are willing at least to make them now, you have started on the way to keeping them, and we're still at the beginning. I, you know, I feel almost every day now, like, I've been saying for a couple of weeks now, like, this is not exactly the right right quote unquote quote way to say it but it's all I can come up with is it's like I don't care I'm sort of letting go of things that I used to think were so important to care about does that make sense to anybody mm -hmm. I mean like well I'm not I'm not efforting I, I'm uh, not efforting and uh, mm -hmm. a, a, a trying to make a preferred have a preferred outcome I'm not yeah. efforting a preferred outcome oh and I think Anne mentioned something like that or in one of our discussions during the day not to pray for something specific but what is in my what my best what i need what i need what and i need and yeah. i will lead you there right and that was really cool for me today i really like that so and today uh, today's today is lesson is god yeah. is in everything i see i know <laughs> and i remember <laughs> i, I I love these next, this, God is in everything I see, and, and lesson 30. Oh, tomorrow? Yeah. Is, is God, God is in everything I see because God is in my mind. <laughs> I just love think, that. I remember when I first, I, I first heard that, which was, it just sounds like space alien stuff, yeah. you know? God is in my mind! God is in my mind! You know? I painted I mean, a I mean, painting. That's how I heard, that's how I heard it. You know, I, for the very first the time. The very first time we, we read uh, read this. Uh, we were doing it together. We were doing it together, and we were um, uh, laughing at this <laughs> particular lesson. We were like, oh my God, God is in my mind. You know, and it was just really funny, and I created this painting about it. And everything. We've had a good time with like, this. This is yeah. one of our favorite lessons. We have a lot of fun with these lessons anyway. So, um, yeah. yeah. So that's... Those Make the silly songs the about word. them and all kinds of stuff. Speaking of silly songs, 
I don't know how this one's gonna turn out, but I'm gonna ring the bell and meditate. Give us our little meditation moment and a little bit of silence. And then I'm going to read, read sing uh, from the Radiant Sutras, banter verses 10 through 12. And um, I'm just gonna read it to you first so that uh, as I sing it, you may hear it a little more. It goes like this, and this addresses in a lot of ways why Glenn and I are so silly <laughs> with uh, the way we present things and just in our life, how we laugh and giggle and everything, because we feel like the spiritual path, I mean, both of us do, we resonate with this. Um, with the Sufis a lot. And, and with the Sufis, we do. Um, <laughs> we, you know, we feel like, uh, Sometimes we treat spiritual matters so um, yeah. piously and, or and so it's precious, it's precious, just too precious, you know, that uh, in our lives we 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 want to laugh and have fun and and uh, see just see see this whole business as a joyful excursion, you know, as um, art. Oh, as art, yeah. <laughs> as you can see in the background, art is very important to us. So, um, I don't know, with all of that in mind, let me read this first. It says this, elaborate rituals and garish images may be useful in meditation when your mind is whirling with thoughts of sex, money, and power, wandering like an elephant in heat. <laughs> That's quite an image. <laughs> Go ahead and use these tools. Yet no, beating drums and blaring trumpets cannot summon the one who is already present. I am not a collection of incantations known only to experts. I am not a ladder to be climbed, a sequence for piercing energy centers in your body. I am not to be found at the end of a long road. I am right here. Once again, we come into the sanctuary and co-create together our circle of unconditional love, which includes everything that we like and everything that we do not like, because we learn from it all.
I am not a ladder to be climbed. A sequence for piercing energy centers in your body. I am not to be found at the end of a long road. I am right here. Very cool. Oh, thank you. Thanks for that letting me. That was a lot me, of fun. Thanks for letting me experiment with this, y'all. Mm -hmm. Thank you so that was much. It's a lot of fun. I like. I like doing this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, son. <laughs> it's a good example of um, uh, what section uh, two was about. Uh, section two. We're on chapter three, okay. and uh, that is because oh, here we go. Yeah, we go. So the image I used, and you can you can pick one of your own favorite, uh, uh, your own one in your head. Do you have a, a a picture of like a babbling brook, this beautiful idyllic forest scene where the little brook is coming down through? Mm. So that's kind of the image I used in a uh, class on in our class on Wednesday uh, with the group because I wanted to get across the idea that you know, and what Yolanda just brilliantly displayed was being in the flow mm. like being in this ever present moment the radiance suture as these things are called mm, yeah. so being inside yeah. the, and a couple of weeks ago you, you you remember that she um that uh, uh she says do you know that i am the inner radiance yes that you're looking the inner radiance you're looking for yeah she you said know that. um yeah. That's that. That's that, that's the satisfied. That's what we are, which which exists as what is living in life. So I want to want you to put an image of a beautiful uh, uh, flowing stream, you know, into your into your into your uh, head for uh, the way of, con of conceptualizing this. Mm -hmm. And this chapter three is called the innocent perception. Now, uh, there's a reason why that I call chapter three the goals or the intent section, is because that's exact. That's the question is, what do you want? The answer is an innocent perception. Mm. The answer to the question, what do you want, or what what do you, it's what you need, right? So what you oh, need is yeah. the, an innocent perception. Again, we create the conditions for seeing. We create the condition, which means, like I've been saying, getting out of the way or stepping mm. aside. You know, seeing where our attention is going. So it's six. It's just it's six paragraphs. It's very fun. I think, uh, talking about this idea of a flow, and it's section two, if you're uh, following along, this is the miracle as true perception. So mm. you remember what a miracle is, right? <laughs> miracles, the first chapter is, the first chapter of The Course of Miracles is, is, is like, what, is, what are miracles? Because it's talking about what is reality, mm. right? So when, when it says miracles is true perception, or it goes reality is, what is real or is we can is, is seeing it correctly is being in reality Mir the miracle of being here now is true perception that's where those things happen at the same time they're um congruous so read what i've highlighted because i think yeah. uh, this is gonna be interesting i like this it is i want to um i want to remind folks that we we switch back and forth from mm -hmm. this screen to um the other screen where we're reading mm -hmm. so if you have if you have something to say you can certainly put it in the chat but we may not see it for a minute mm -hmm. but oh look marie says nothing but my thoughts can attack, attack me. me right for sure excellent so we just now saw that um but if you have something that you really uh, are burning to say like just unmute and yep. you know say it blurt it out <laughs> so i'm gonna start <clears throat> here um with paragraph one, chapter three, the innocent perception, section two, miracle as true perception. And it goes like this. It is impossible to conceive of light and darkness or everything and nothing as joint possibilities. They are all true or all false. It is essential that you realize your thinking will be erratic until a firm commitment to one or the other is made. <laughs> a firm commitment to darkness or nothingness, however, is impossible. Oh, I know. See, that's what we worry Yay. about. Isn't it? 
<laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> so um, this is so again. So this is reality. In reality, there aren't any hierarchies. Mm. In reality, there are no matters of degree. That's why she says it's it's impo it, it is impossible to conceive of light and darkness or everything and nothing. Nothing is joint possibilities. Everything and nothing can exist in the same place. Mm -hmm. Just like light and darkness don't exist in the same place. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's it's better to exist. So this is the idea that it's better to exist as this or that. Oh right, mm -hmm. right, and which is isn't true. Right, it's never going to be true because right. that means hierarchies. That means matters of degree. So it isn't. And it couldn't be better to be somebody else or shaped a different way or anything. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, because there aren't levels. That is the faulty. She goes, their fundamental thinking about what you want and the way you evaluate is is skewed and warped. Mm -hmm. Right? So we can see it. We go, oh, that's true. So it's it's not better to exist as one way or another, even if it's out of pain or in pain. So he's like, just this the idea. It's, 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 it's a, like, a little idea that uh, it's, it's, you can't be a little pregnant. You, know, <laughs> you can't be a little, a little bit of evil and all this good. Oh, you yeah. Know? Okay. Yeah. Or the opposite, you know. Right. A little bit of good and all this good. <laughs> yeah. So, so she, makes a she makes a request. Your, uh, you know, your, your inner guide, right? Mm -hmm. the, the wahi, what we like to call wahi guru. So the, your inner guide makes a request. Uh, you need uh, to make a commitment. <laughs> you need to make a commitment. You need to keep reminding yourself what, what you do want and how much you don't know, right? Because we're going through the lessons. We're going, I don't know what anything is for. I'm attacking my attack thoughts are attacking my invulnerability. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what we're doing in the lessons. And we come and we're reading in this and it says, oh, the, the reminder is we're actually built for this. You know, we actually can do it. She's asking us to make a commitment to choose our, choose reality, right? Reality. Oh, that's something we can actually we can actually get on board with. If we can let go of, it's better to exist as this way or that way. Right. You know, right. That that's something sense. else we can we can point our attention to mm -hmm. instead of the, a specific kind of need to this efforting thing. Mm -hmm. You know. So, and, and she says, you know this already because even somebody who is completely out of it knows with knows the truth when they hear it. Mm. You know, you have had moments of truth when you listen to the voice and things got better. Everybody does. Mm. Everybody has that, you know, Jiminy Cricket. You know, everybody has that <laughs> moment when they when they did the right, when they listened and, and did the right thing. We do believe in truth. It's something that we each have a touchstone and an experience for, no matter what else has happened to us. And that's, that's trust. And we can trust that, she says. Nobody wow. can deny truth totally. So wow. she puts that. So read this next bit. Lovely. I know. Wow. Let's it's see. it's helpful. It's, it's uh, so gentle. No one, okay. no one can uh, deny truth totally. Right. Okay. So read so, this next bit. It, it is not until their innocence becomes a viewpoint with universal application that it becomes wisdom. Here we go. Innocent or true perception means that you never misperceive and always see truly. More simply, <laughs> it means that you never see what does not exist and always see what does. So oh, what is wow. what's what is, so we go back to the introduction to the Course of Miracles mm -hmm. and the introduction to the Course of Miracles says nothing unreal you uh, nothing real can nothing, be threatened. Nothing real can be threatened. There's nothing unreal real exists here here in here lies the peace of God. God. Yeah. So we're and she said if you can the way that we that we the action that we take is we the we look at ourselves, we take the stand for ourselves being innocent. Mm. And we take that innocence and we look out of the world through the innocent, through our own innocence. Because mm. if you, and she makes a promise, because if you do this long enough, you'll develop wisdom. <laughs> if you look at the world totally unfiltered, Develop this skill that we have a viewpoint of universal application. Innocence. Mm. The promise is you develop the development of wisdom. Right? It's with this clear voice to speak in this very, very clear voice. And she uses, it's funny, she, goes, she puts innocence 
as true perception. Innocence means true perception. If you're seeing with innocence, you're seeing truly. Wow. See truly what exists is innocent. And so, don't, she goes, don't worry about it. Uh, misperceiving is just uh, seeing what doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't beat yourself up, you know, just, you know, mis when you misperceive, you're just looking at something that doesn't exist. And it, it's not going to, it still can't hurt you. Wow. Boy, that's a great promise. How easy. How <laughs> yeah. fun. Is, I mean, it's like, oh, oh, I, I keep making, I keep trying to scare myself. Right? right, right. I keep trying to wake up and scare myself so into into some action to create uh, mm -hmm. uh, some outcome that I'm I'm, I'm desperate to have because it's mm -hmm. better to be this way or that way. Right, that's that's because you just it's almost unescapable. Right, that's why she's talking about learn where our attention is going and what we're trying to control because the level uh -huh. confusion uh -huh. is serious. Because we're trying to control out there when this is creating out there. Right. It's fun stuff when you start to be yeah. able to see it. Yeah. And that's our creative power. That's the that's why it's here. Because we're creating it. Right? So this, uh, uh, this innocence uh, uh, is <laughs> right-minded. So... No, no, no. Yeah, no, no, no. no, 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 no okay, 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 I yeah. want to read this next <laughs> so thing because it's so, so cool. So what does not... So, the, so what, we mis, what we misperceive is what does not exist. So, right. Okay, so right, right, right. read this next bit because I'm, so, I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen to this, though. This is cool. When you lack confidence in what someone will do, you are attesting to your belief that he is not in his right mind. <laughs> the miracle perceives everything as it is. Oh. If nothing but the truth exists, right-minded seeing cannot see anything but perception that perfection perfection wow yeah if we cannot see anything but perfection perfection True when we're in our seeing, right mind yeah. right mm -hmm. or you know so innocence is right-minded seeing mm -hmm. innocence yeah. is right-minded seeing the request here is not to manage others or manage the world mm. you know mm. the reminder is that we're we're all of us a part of that underground miracle worker network remember the <laughs> holy spirit's running things that we're not right and then we have this the anonymous principle of miracles we do what is ours to do because it is ours to do not because we're trying to create a, get people to like us or even be a spiritual person we're mm. doing what is ours to do because mm. we're directed by holy spirit so this request, mm -hmm. so the reminder is, you're part of the underground miracle worker network. So is everybody else, right? Because everything's exactly how it is mm. for our for our for our learning. And right mindedness sees that perfection wow. to let things be exactly as they are. Right. Because all things are working together for my good. Right, right. Which actually is my uh, spiritual aspiration so far <laughs> this year <laughs> is to let things be, be exactly, exactly as, as they, they are. are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So the action is, and this is where I, I where I, the the picture comes back in our in, in into our awareness. I want to bring that. I want you to bring that picture of that flow, that stream back in. The action is to create with God, and that is to be in this flow where we're not trying to make. We're seeing with innocence, seeing the perfection of all things are working together, and only do and being concerned with what is ours to do. And being the presence of love in the world, or however we're going to understand that, and manifest that in the world, the presence of God, whatever we bring, however we bring that, that's to be in the flow, be by this beautiful, perfect stream. You know, that's what wow. I was thinking. So read this next bit. Wow. I just had a thought that like we are that perfect stream. I hope somebody would say that. Yeah. <laughs> Good let's see, let's see if anybody has a comment. No, no, no. Okay, cool. But I just what it, this is what occurred to me. Okay. Um you um if you can go over here, there you go. You are afraid of God's will because you have used <laughs> your own mind, which he created in the likeness of his own to miscreate. So you're afraid of God's will because you've used your own mind to miscreate. But see God, what isn't there. To see what isn't there. But God actually created your mind in the likeness of his own. The mind can miscreate only when it believes it is not free. An imprisoned mind 
is not free because it is possessed or held back by itself. <laughs> I hope. I, 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 I'm, are you onto yourself? <laughs> That the, 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 the one who says I can't is is the one, yeah. Hopefully you're 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 on you're on yourself in that regard. Right. Um, oh gosh. So to be one is to be of one mind or will. The, mm. This see this is. Do you see the miscreations of a dangerous mind? Mm. Right. You're just seeing things that aren't there. Right. Right. And she calls she calls uh, uh, these uh, miscreations. Remember what and, and the when we step out of creating with God, we are using a dangerous mind. She goes that when you're not in the present moment, you're, you're in date. you you have a dangerous mind. She says, because mm. we don't make decisions based. We make, we further the, our, our, the suffering for ourselves and others, mm. mm -hmm. right? Cause mm -hmm. we're not in the present. We're not doing what we're not listening. We're not in the practice like George was saying. Mm -hmm. So how to miscreate, we learn how to, you know how you miscreate. You believe that you're not free. Mm. You're afraid. You're imprisoned. You're held back. That's the beliefs that lead us to miscreate. Because something's got to change, right? The remedy is oneness. To align with, to align my will with God's will. And to see, to, and to choose to see reality. To see that all this is perfectly the way it's supposed to be. in Because we're, we're secret miracle workers. You know. <laughs> so is everybody else. So yeah, if, when that? we see the world as perfect in it, the way it needs to be, we know what action to take. Mm. And then it becomes, she says, perfect. You will see in perfect accord. That's a, that's a, a way of seeing in oneness, accord. It means everything is, we're seeing as one, the oneness as one. That's, that's, the, that's it. That's the moment, right? So the remedy, she says, is oneness. See mm. the world with this uh, un with this uh, undifferentiated innocence, beginning with ourselves, mm. right? Begin with ourselves and look out with that innocence. And she says, you will see, and you will experience what the experience will be, will be heaven, <laughs> because you will see in accord in in accord as one. Is that great? Well, wow. a nice metaphor to see in accord to see in perfect accord mm. i just love that phrase have you have you had an experience recently of 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 that like no catching yourself and then being able to adjust and see oh see oh, the, uh, clearly sure accord. do you have a a, a a favorite resentment that you're working on uh, or like some, something somebody or something that's, I know I that's, do. <laughs> that's that's going that you're working with right now that that you, you have to keep forgiving over and over and over again yeah do you ever do some of that that would be like remembering the remember to like you catch yourself moving out working with your danger working in a dangerous mind uh, to uh -huh. leave the moment or work in and to get rehashing this resentment or whatever you stepped out of you stepped out of where you want to be and so that's remembering it's like oh i want to see no we're innocent oh, everybody's yeah. innocent so i don't feel it i don't do it but i know i'm gonna act on it because i know that's true and that's what i want to experience because i want to be yeah. in heaven i want to see reality i want to uh -huh. be in the miracle and not in the suffering wow yeah 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 so you yeah. can but you have to be able to see it before mm -hmm. you can do anything about it right right absolutely so read this next bit yeah. we're coming. yeah no, it's good. Good, good it's good it's good nothing can prevail against a son of god who commends his spirit into the hands of his father okay more action steps she says this is how it feels by doing this the mind awakens from its sleep and remembers its creator all sense of separation disappears wow it's a promise. wow wow because their hearts are pure, the innocent defend true perception instead of defending themselves against it. Ooh. Understanding the lesson of the atonement, they are without the wish to attack, and therefore they see truly. Now there's a clue. The lesson of the atonement. Remember, <laughs> I, my, my sole responsibility, uh, last, last week, my sole responsibility is to accept the atonement for myself. Mm-hmm. And the that's wish to attack. That's what she's talking about. The wish to attack, like, is is a red flag. Like, you know. Oh, yeah. Whoop. Okay. Oneness is out the window. Tossed it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because their hearts are pure, the innocent defend, the innocent defend true, true perception, perception instead of defending, defending themselves, themselves against it. Yeah. 
So commend your spirit. So this is the request here is like, do you, did you get it? Commend your spirit into the hands of the father. Mm -hmm. Step aside, right? Mm -hmm. Hands of the father. Mm -hmm. Like like a child. I could have given the image mm -hmm. of like a child holding his father's hand. Mm -hmm. You know? Commend your spirit into the hands of somebody who's wiser and stronger and knows more. And the wiser. The wahe guru. Not mm -hmm. the one who wants things different. Right? Not that one. Right. And the awakened mind is one in which separation disappears and awakened mind so you've awakened to this innocent perception and this uh sense of your default setting is joy and you're not afraid there's an need to defend or want everything is moving in this flow wow. she calls that she calls that creating with the, the father, father. Yeah. perfect she calls she uses the word perfect integration mm -hmm. And she, it, it establishes peace. See, it doesn't have a shape or a form. Because, again, as we learn here, what is true isn't a concept. Mm. It's beyond concepts. It's mm. beyond language. It right? sure is. So it's reality. <laughs> it's a, that's why we use, we use the words like miracle or reality. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. So reality is only seen by the innocent. Reality is only seen by the innocent, it says. And the quote is, defend true perception instead of defending themselves against, against it. it right how off uh, we we also know that sometimes the truth does hurt yeah you know but what it hurts is is a, a, a request for healing a, yeah. a call for love oh gosh i see know? that so clearly right now when you just said it it was just like yeah I, i'm gonna that that i want that that shows me where my work is where my practice is uh -huh. where i where my uh, where i don't have skills where i believe in attack yeah. Right? So without the wish to attack is another way of saying we see our brothers as innocent. Because who mm. who's the thing that needs them to attack? What are we what are we trying to accomplish by the attack? Uh, of revenge or pre preventive something or keep what are we keeping safe or what is it you know, that whole paradigm unravels mm -hmm. when we say, Oh, without attack, how do I see my brother? In it innocence. And then we start to say that can't be innocence because of what they did do. And so there's more healing. We can see where the healing is. Uh -huh. So we're going to, I mean, this is chapter, you know, three. So we got, <laughs> we got 29 more chapters to go. And we're, we're going to get, we're going to really go down that. We're going to, we will go down that road. Okay. But not yet. Because she wants to say, this is the goal section. Do you understand that you base your actions and your decisions on what you want. And if you can't, if you don't know what you want, don't even recognize what you want, or even what you're doing is actually not getting you what you want. If you can't even see that, mm -hmm. you aren't even going to be willing to make a different decision or, or mm -hmm. even risk doing something differently that might bring you the results that you want to. She goes, you could be living in heaven. You could live in heaven <laughs> if you want to. If you make a choice for your own innocence to see the world wow. Um, as uh, one thing in innocent. Uh, I keep going back to that prayer of... And uh, you would be wise to yeah. do so, it says. I know. <laughs> so, praying for what I need instead of what my ego might say right. I want right. yeah, is really right. coming back to me. So this All is the, right. it, on this sixth on this sixth paragraph, um, she what what oh, I wait 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 we got something in the chat okay. here. Oh hi Jacqueline. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> okay, let's go back and um, this is the last paragraph. And uh, the last paragraph mm -hmm. often in uh, the text because uh, in the in, in the form of a course of miracles it tells you what kind of what the concept is what and why we don't do it, right? We don't, and then she wraps it all up with what I call the altar call. And so this is the lesson said again, repeated, but usually in a really, really delicious and memorable way. So read, read this last paragraph to us. Okay, here we go. This is lovely. The way to correct distortions is to withdraw your faith in them and invest it only in what is true. You cannot make untruth true. <laughs> I just want to come back and say, hallelujah. <laughs> you cannot make untruth true, right? <laughs> if you are willing to accept what is true in everything you perceive, you let it be true for you. Truth overcomes all error, and those who live in error and emptiness can never find lasting solace. Wow. 
Uh, yeah. If you perceive truly, you are canceling out misperceptions in yourself and in others simultaneously. I'm going to read that again. If you perceive truly, you are canceling out misperceptions in yourself and in others simultaneously. Because you see them as they are, you offer them your acceptance of their truth so they can accept it for themselves. This is the healing that the miracle induces. How about that for the last I paragraph? I like that. Yeah. You know, so re it's so absolutely uh, reassuring. Very so reassuring. We, she's talking about the distorted seeing. Right. Withdraw your faith and belief in the story, mm -hmm. in this narrative that we tell about ourselves and the way mm -hmm. things have got to be, and invest in the truth. Spend your precious attention on what is true. Your innocent perception actually is a healing yourself and the world around you. If you'll you learn to use it universally, like without everyone's innocent. The request is because you see people as they are, you offer acceptance of their truth, their innocence, and then they begin to believe in and accept it themselves. And isn't that the way that often somebody else did it for us? Like oh, we were yeah. accepted kind of into a group or into, we were loved maybe a little bit before somebody else loved us more than we loved ourselves, before we could love ourselves. Oh, oh, yes. I think in my you know? um, high school and my youth pastor who was really, really wonderful and did that for me, mm -hmm. like really loved me into the place where I could begin to love myself. That mm -hmm. was really... I see that, yeah. You see, because you see them mm -hmm. as they are, mm -hmm. because you accept them as they are, mm -hmm. our ability to, because we've accepted ourselves as we are, mm -hmm. right? And the world as we are, because it's all innocent. It's mm -hmm. nothing to nothing to attack. So that is the power of what is true. Mm -hmm. That is the power of what really, really exists. Mm -hmm. The power to heal, to see things as they are, which is innocent and joyful. And to, that feels like being in the flow. And, cre and she says, creating with the Father, being in that stream, you know, uh, that babbling brook and this perfect idyllic heaven, this Garden of Eden again, here and now. So I'm here and now. Here and now. I'm, I'm Reverend Glenn Morton Ganaway, your favorite anarchist <laughs> preacher. And um, uh, this is the love of my life, uh, Reverend mm -hmm. Yolanda. I'm really glad you're here and you, with uh, uh, the Mighty <laughs> Companions Hour. Yay! <laughs> oh, oh, cool. oh, right. Let's see. There's some things. Oh, Cindy's here. Hi, Cindy. We're so glad you're here. Hi, Jacqueline. Good to have you uh, with us, as it says. I know. It's so good to have you uh, with us. One of my favorite songs. Uh, I know. Yeah, my I saw that you picked mm -hmm. this. That was so sweet. So, well, um, it, and actually, it kind of goes with what I. Um, uh, oh, thank you, Cindy. That's so sweet. Um, with what I just recalled of my youth pastor, because um, this song that we're going to play is called Home. It's Glenn's, one of Glenn's favorite songs of mine. It talks about home is the place that never changes, the love inside yourself that never changes. And what happened, the reason why I'm relating it to what I was telling you about in high school is because I, this particular youth pastor, uh, was a part of a, uh, this was the 70s and, and we were called Jesus, we called ourselves Jesus Freaks. We had long hair and played guitar and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. and passed out tracks on the beach. <laughs> passed out tracks on the beach, you know, all that stuff. But we had a commune and we lived together and we had a band. And um, in this commune, uh, in the band, uh, our youth pastor was so um, kind to me and he helped me learn to play the guitar and saw me, uh, as the love that I am. And he knew I had a crush on him and he didn't, you know, make a big deal out of it or anything. He was just really, really loving and it it made me feel home. And anyway, uh, we're gonna show this um, video here of my song. And there are some scenes there from my hometown, Muscle Shoals, Alabama.
do you want to know the place that's always green do you want to see the things we seldom see do you want to hear the things we barely hear well I Take you there. I can take you there. Home is the place that never changes. It's the love inside yourself that never changes. Home is the place that never changes. And I Do you want to know the way of time and space? And do you need a place that nothing can erase? And do you need to be through eternity? Well, I found my way there, and I can take you there. That never changes. It's the love inside yourself that never changes. Home is the place that never changes. And I found my way home. Oh. Changes. It's the love inside yourself that never changes. And I found my way home. I found my way a little bit of home and uh thank you i'm so glad you enjoyed it so we're done for mighty companions we'll see you next time i know i know but you're not done to